Imagine being the man who single-handedly shook the foundations of one of the world's most powerful financial institutions. Today, we're diving deep into the thrilling story of how George Soros, an investor like no other, managed to break the Bank of England. You won't believe the audacity, the strategy, and the sheer financial genius that it took. So buckle up and watch until the end to discover how Soros turns the tables on an entire nation's economy. You don't want to miss this. Black Wednesday, setting the stage. The 1990s was a time of significant political and economic flux in Europe. As nations maneuvered towards greater integration, the European Exchange Rate Mechanism, or ERM, was conceived. This system was put in place to ensure that currencies from different European countries moved in harmony, aiming to stabilize European currencies in anticipation of the introduction of the euro. Britain entered the ERM in October of 1990. This meant the British pound was pegged to a band and was only allowed to fluctuate within a limited range against other European currencies. The primary goal was to control inflation, but the UK economy was in a downturn, battling recession, high unemployment rates, and rising inflation. The UK government, led by Prime Minister John Major, was determined to keep Britain within the ERM believing that the mechanism would help stabilize the country's economy. To maintain the pegged rate of the pound, the Bank of England was required to align its monetary policy, especially interest rates, with that of German's Bundesbank, the most dominant central bank in Europe at the time. However, this policy alignment became increasingly challenging the British economy's needs started to diverge from those of Germany. While Germany was hiking up interest rates to control inflation after its reunification with East Germany, the UK was desperate for lower interest rates to spur growth and alleviate the recession. By 1992, the pressure on the pound was becoming unbearable. Despite Britain's best efforts, including hiking interest rates and spending billions in foreign exchange reserves, it was evident to many market watchers that the pound was overvalued. The tensions reached their climax on September 16, 1992, dubbed Black Wednesday. This was the day when the interplay of politics, economics, and market forces would collide, setting the stage for one of the most dramatic episodes in financial history. Soros Sees a Weakness George Soros, a seasoned investor known for his sharp market instincts and an uncanny ability to anticipate shifts, began closely observing the predicament the UK found itself in. As the head of the Quantum Fund, Soros had a reputation for making bold moves based on deep economic analysis and geopolitical foresight. Soros and his team, particularly his chief strategist Dr. Stanley Druckenmiller, realized several critical things. Overvaluation of the pound they believed the British pound was significantly overvalued. With the UK's economic conditions, recession, high unemployment, and housing market decline, the pound's high valuation within the ERM was increasingly untenable. Inherent ERM Flaws Soros recognized that the ERM's one-size-fits-all approach was fundamentally flawed. Countries with different economic realities and priorities were being forced into a monetary straitjacket, leading to tensions and vulnerabilities. Misalignment with Germany The UK's need to lower interest rates contrasted sharply with Germany's anti-inflationary stance. The Bundesbank decisions, largely influenced by the economic aftermath of German reunification, were not in the best interest of the British economy. Reserve Limitations Soros knew that the Bank of England's foreign exchange reserves, used to prop up the pound, were finite. There was a limit to how long the central bank could defend its currency by buying pounds and selling foreign currency. Market Sentiment Beyond the fundamentals, Soros sensed a growing skepticism among other traders and investors. The market's confidence in the UK's ability to maintain the pound's peg was eroding. With these observations, Soros began to formulate a strategy. He saw an opportunity where many saw risk. While betting against a nation's currency was audacious, the signs pointing toward the pound's devaluation were just too glaring for Soros to ignore. 
the billion dollar bet. With this conviction, Soros, through his quantum fund, began amassing a sizable short position against the pound. He essentially borrowed billions in British pounds, sold them on the currency markets, and planned to buy them back later at a cheaper rate. By September 16th, Soros's bet against the pound reached an astounding $10 billion. The Bank of England Fights Back In the annals of finance, few bets have been as audacious as George Soros's gamble against the British pound. His strategy combined deep analysis with a boldness that shook the financial world. Soros began shorting the pound, borrowing and selling large quantities, intending to buy them back cheaper later. The scale of his trades was so vast that it not only predicted, but actively drove the pound's devaluation. The Bank of England's Counter In response to the falling pound, the Bank of England hastily raised interest rates and spent billions from its reserves to buy the pound, aiming to stabilize its value. However, the market saw these measures as temporary fixes rather than long-term solutions. The Inevitable Collapse Despite the bank's efforts, the market pressure, significantly influenced by Soros' position, was overwhelming. On September 16, 1992, the UK government announced the pound's withdrawal from the ERM, allowing its devaluation, reaping the rewards. With the pound's devaluation, Soros repurchased the currency at a much reduced rate, netting a profit of over $1 billion in just days. This bold move branded him as the man who broke the Bank of England. Aftermath Beyond the immediate profit, Soros's move exposed flaws in the fixed exchange rate systems and the limits of central bank interventions. While initially tumultuous, many believe this event set the stage for the UK's future economic growth. Soros's billion-dollar bet remains a testament to visionary investing and the vulnerabilities of monetary systems. It's both a cautionary tale and a lesson in audacity. Despite the Bank of England's aggressive defense, Soros held his ground. He believed the UK's economic conditions couldn't support such high interest rates for very long. And he was right. By evening, it became clear to the British government that their strategy wasn't working. Eventually, the Bank of England conceded defeat. They announced Britain's exit from the ERM and a suspension of the pound's peg to the European currencies. The pound subsequently plummeted. Soros's bet had paid off, and he repurchased the borrowed pounds at a much lower rate, pocketing the difference. A Windfall Profit In a single day, George Soros made a profit of over $1 billion, cementing his reputation as one of the world's most astute and fearless investors. This episode demonstrated the immense power that a well-positioned and well-timed market bet could have, even against a central bank. The saga of George Soros and the Bank of England is more than just a tale of vast profits. It's a lesson in meticulous analysis, conviction, and the audacity to act when opportunities present themselves. Successful investing requires not only recognizing weakness in the market, but also the courage to capitalize on them, even when the odds may seem stacked against you. And there we have it, the gripping tale of the man and the moment that changed financial history. If this narrative of audacity and insight inspired you, please give us a thumbs up and share with your fellow financial aficionados. Don't forget to subscribe to The Investor's Compass for more tales of financial marvels, adventures, and wisdom. Until our next journey!